If you've been watching Tokyo on Fire, you know that the Prime Minister has been exceedingly busy on the diplomatic front towards the last three months of 2015. We are now in 2016. He's beginning to shift gears, and what he has done so far in the first seven days of this year indicates to us some of the things he will be pursuing in the new year. One of the things that he did was really a, a pretty big deal, was he visited Ise Shrine, one of the major Shinto shrines in Japan. Michael, you've been following this issue. This is a pretty big deal, isn't it? This is an extraordinarily important deal in terms of Abe's nationalism and Abe's sense of the separation of church and state. Now, Abe has had a problem visiting Yasukuni Shrine, the shrine that's dedicated to the souls of those who have perished in the defense of the empire. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, he seems to have replaced going to Yasukuni. He was gone to Yasukuni once uh, on the first year anniversary of his becoming prime minister again, but has not gone since. Well, he's probably uh, avoided visiting Yasukuni just because of all of the, the collateral that it creates for him, right? That, that's a, that seems to be it. And that right. instead, what he has done now for three years running is open up the year with his Hatsumode, his first shrine visit of the year, being at the imperial shrines of Ise. Okay. Now, the imperial shrine is absolutely directly connected to the person of the, per, of the present emperor. The, uh, the, the shrine god, or goddess in this case, is Amaterasu Omikami, the supposed direct ancestor. The of creator the, of, the of the imperial Japanese, line. Right. And the, of the, the, the mother figure of the, of the Japanese imperial line. And the emperor, until, during the uh, Meiji period, and all the way to the end of 1945, the emperor was actually the chief priest mm -hmm. at Ise. So he, Mr. Abe, is really di directly connecting himself to the imperial house in a way that pretty much no prime minister has ever done before. In addition, this he brought with him a lot of the cabinet. And he's done this for three years running now. He brings a, a number of cabinet ministers. Mm -hmm. Now, ostensibly, that's a violation of Article 25 of the Constitution, which states Separation of that, said state. that, that members of the government cannot be forced or required to go to religious act, take part in religious activities. And, and it's, it's basically the separation of church and state that exists in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Constitution. This religious act is basically... Uh, glossed over as being cultural, that it's part of Japanese culture, and that's what makes it okay. Right. And that's and he's taking full advantage of it. But there's always been this tension between uh, the prime minister and the imperial household, particularly this was uh, evident at the uh, commemoration of the end of the Pacific War, 70 years, the prime minister made a speech and the emperor made a speech, and they were um, you know, there was a lot of controversy about what the emperor was going to say as opposed to what the prime minister was going to say. And there, there seems to be this tension. But what you're saying is, no, there seems to be more of a, of a coalescing of uh, the prime minister trying to glom on to the power and the prestige of, of the Shinto religion. Yeah, whether the emperor appreciates it or not, I, I would really doubt. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the, the imperial house has a very great problem with, with Prime Minister Abe. We saw that very significantly in the first year of the Abe administration when they made for the first time an official uh, ceremony of the end of the occupation. Right. And the emperor agreed to appear at this ceremony and was greeted with a, a massive set of banzais from the assembly, including Mr. Abe, who was throwing his hands up in banzai, banzai as well. And the, the, the atmospherics, the visuals were, the, the imperial couple just froze on the stage. I imagine. They were just, how did you ever cajole us into being part of this? And that ceremony has never happened again. Mm -hmm. But he has, he has taken the Imperial House's personal shrine, Issei is their personal shrine, and made it his own. Mm -hmm. he, he has made his Hatsumoto, his first visit, for three years running. He gave, this year, he gave his first press conference of the year at the Diet, because he had opened the Diet so early right. on January 4th. But for the previous two years, his first press conference was from within the precincts of Issei. And Issei, of course, is going to be where they're going to have the G7 summit. Right. And the, bringing the shrine into the summit pageantry 
is one of the plans of the Abe administration. So we're going to have yes. just the world leaders also taking part, mm -hmm. again, in violation of the Article 25, separation of church and state. He, there has been a great deal of suggestion, maybe even pressure, for the other delegations to take to at least visit the Issei shrines. So it's a real, a really interesting take on this. Well, I think this this uh, involvement of of the church and and the prime minister's attempt to to reach out to the public and also to bring in you know world leaders there is is a, a signal to us that I think we should watch very carefully because he's he's looking for all of the these handholds that he can get looking forward to the election of this uh, of this summer and. We've talked a little bit about the emperor. He's been active this week, too. He opened the diet just three days ago. And in, in, in that one, talking about the separation of church and state, the communists showed up for that ceremony for the first time ever. The, they, have, you know, they have rejected their own religion of a sort mm -hmm. by saying, yes, we now accept the emperor's existence and that he rules and that he has the right to start the diet. Right. They're, they're losing their religion as well. Uh -huh. so, you know, whereas they, they don't want the bus to leave without them. Yeah, right? and so the, the, there's, there's all kinds of things that are happening in terms of dogma mm -hmm. that uh, we really should keep an eye on. We have focused on the separation of church and state on Tokyo on Fire. We've had a podcast on that in the past, mm -hmm. a long time ago, I remember. Yeah. But uh, I think it bears mentioning here that the, that the emperor is, in fact, uh, not constitutionally, but in in the regular culture of Japan, he is a god of 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 the Shinto religion. He is an existing god, and uh, the after the end of the war, MacArthur came in. They changed a lot of different things, and one of the things they said is, you know, you're no longer a god, right? Let's, well, let's well, get he, that they, straight. They made it voluntary. They mm -hmm. said it would be nice if you said you renounced your your divinity, and Emperor Hirohito did. Mm -hmm. He he said, I am not divine. Right, uh, but there is a large number of people, particularly who are that. supporters of uh, right. Mr. Abe, who believe that he still is. Sure, I mean it depends on what the definition of is is, and maybe he had his fingers crossed behind his back. Who knows? But I mean, to give up divinity—that's a pretty big deal. It was a big deal, but his son, the current emperor, has been steadfast in maintaining a very, very strong sense that there was. There is a big wall right. separating the current imperial house from what existed before September the 2nd, 1945, and the mm -hmm. surrender of Japan. That they are two di very different things. Right. And that the current imperial house is has no pretensions to go back to a Meiji-style imperial emperor as a god situation, that they have no interest in that at all. And it seems that the next generation, the crown prince, and, and Prince Akishino are all on the same page on this as well. So that's been a real source of tension between mm -hmm. the Imperial House and, and Mr. Abe's supporters, if not Mr. Abe himself. Well, Michael, you are a student of, of Japanese history, and we have seen this in the past, maybe four, four, four or five hundred years ago, where the uh, Tokugawas became powerful and the warlords and the warring nations, and they used and manipulated the imperial household to assert their power. Well, and then in the Meiji Restoration, they took it and took it to a completely different level, mm -hmm. which where the, the Meiji oligarchs' source of legitimacy, the reason why they were allowed to overthrow the Tokugawa was because they were restoring mm -hmm. the emperor to his rightful place. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and in terms of Abe's creeping into the imperial house, basically by the back door in this case, right. using Ise all the way out in Mie Prefecture as the way to get into the imperial house. It's, it's a in, really interesting situation. Now, there are rela political relations, this is a trivia, but the, the uh, uh, former Prime Minister Aso, uh, his sister is actually an married into the imperial house. So there are there are relations between politicians and the imperial house that exist. However, Abe, with his fraught relationship with the current emperor, his use of, of Ise politically, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, it's, been, it's been very blatant. When the prefectures applied to be hosts of the G7 summit, Mie did not put in a bid until the Kante called them and said, actually, the 
the uh, the date for submitting an application has passed, but we would really like to receive an application from you. Right. And then they put together their bid and it was accepted by the Conte. It's blatantly manipulating the end result in order to get ISE and everything together mm -hmm. as a package. Okay. Yes, well this is definitely an issue to watch. I think uh, the, the, the summit of the group of seven will be in May There'll be a lot leading up to that, and uh, this is an issue that will probably become even uh, more heated in, in the press and probably uh, in topical conversations too. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree, and, but, and one has to understand that for Japan, G7 summits are huge, or G8 summits, but before Russia mm -hmm. made itself into, and exiled itself basically from the, the process, they are a huge deal in this country in a way that they aren't in any other country right. that, that takes part in them. That Mie got the G7 summit is really an indication of big time political force behind this. Mm -hmm. The last time that they had a summit, uh, they, they put it in Hokkaido, up, uh, and they had the environmental summit before that. They made a huge deal of having an Okinawa summit. Right. And it, they even in, issued a special 2,000 yen bill that you only occasionally see nowadays right. with the Shuri castle on it. They mm -hmm. make a big, big deal, and that Mie and Ise have this thing is going to be pushed by the, by the administration over and over and over again as a PR blitz. Well, usually these uh, summits are really festivals of, of goodwill and, and great pro PR for uh, the company that, that is hosting them. And you've got to imagine that the prime minister, with the election coming just two months afterward, is really going to be playing that one up. Oh, they are going to play it up at, at, at 11, to use the old joke about right. this. It's going to be way over the top for what is really going to be, it's, it's, it's really a pro forma thing. Mm -hmm. The first G8, G7 summits were really trying to do something about the world economy, and the members of the G7 summit controlled a major proportion of that economy. Right. Now we have parties that are not uh, members of the G7, China, India, Brazil, which play a huge role in the world economy and that are not part of the process. So it's really become a show Right. But in Japan, it's a big show. Right. Well, a lot of the times what we try and focus on in Tokyo on Fire is putting these parts together that really don't seem to make much sense outside of the, their context. But this one, you know, the, the summit in uh, Mie really, it's been, it's been a huge buildup. The prime minister for three months has been on a diplomatic a tour throughout the world. He's been building up his base. He's really active, but I think this is all gearing up to something really dramatic in May.